spooky human beings, or you may not be spooky, that's that's completely up to you. Hello human beings. Welcome to another weekly reading vlog. We're into week four of Spookathon. I don't want it to be over. I have read so much this month. I think I am on my 13th book, which is a very spooky number as well. Ooh. Anyway, I've read 13 books so far this month. I have had such a good time with all the books I have read. I have really enjoyed a majority of the books and just have rated them quite highly as well. I have definitely got to a point now where I kind of know what I'm interested in reading, I know what I fancy reading, and I can DNF something if I just don't think it's going to be for me, and that is resulting in me having a lot of really highly rated books, which is lovely because that means I'm enjoying so much of what I'm reading. They're not all exclusively amazing obviously, but it's been a good month for books. So this week I'm going to be doing a vlog Monday to Friday, because then on Saturday, Sunday and Monday of next week I'm gonna be doing like a little Halloween vlog thing, like a little weekend. I'm so excited, I've got plans for every day of the weekend that are gonna be really good fun so hopefully you enjoy coming along with me but just as a little quick intro to this vlog I'm gonna be reading The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson this week. I don't really know much about this, I started it last night, I read 22 pages, there is a woman, she is going to this house, I think it might be haunted, that's all I know. I haven't watched the Netflix show because I wanted to read the book first although I've been told it's quite different. I felt like I was on a roll there and then my camera battery died, which was very rude. Anyway, I was gonna tell you about how I hope this book scares me. I have been trying to find a book that completely scares me this whole month, and I have had books that have had fleckers of fear in them, but they have not properly terrified me. Like I haven't been scared to look around the corner in my flat and have to have all the lights on in every room. I haven't got to that point. Will this one be the book to do this? I don't know, obviously I have heard good things about the TV show but the fact that this is quite different from the TV show doesn't really give me a baseline to know what to expect. One of the reviews is from Neil Gaiman who says an amazing writer so that doesn't tell me if it's going to be scary. Stepping into Hill House is like stepping into the mind of a madman, Stephen King. Again, is it scary? Are there any other reviews? No there's no other reviews. Okay I've got no idea. Let's give it a go. Oh wait there is one on the front. There's another one Stephen King. As nearly perfect a haunted house tale as I have ever read. Okay, again, could be more gothic. Doesn't mean it's gonna be scary. I want it to scare me. I wanna be scared. I'm probably gonna really regret that if it actually does scare me or if, if I buy something else and that scares me because I have now pretty much run out of horror books. <laughs> I've essentially read all the ones that I bought last year to save to read this month. I think I have like one or two remaining and this being one of them. But I have just, I've torn through them. Horror has been just, my genre at the moment, I've been really enjoying it. So, reading this this week, I'm also still reading Fairy Tale by Stephen King, which I have been slowly listening to the audiobook of, really enjoying it, so we'll continue to be reading that, and hopefully, no, definitely, I will finish that this week. I, I don't know why I've just promised that. I will. I, I want it finished by the end of the month, and obviously that's next Monday, but I'll go, I'll go for this week, we'll give that a go. I've been reading it for like two vlogs now, you deserve to know my final thoughts on that book. Anyway, this is my current read. Happy Monday. Welcome to the vlog. I've just spent my evening on Patreon sprints reading The Haunting of Hill House. When I went into this I was kind of daunted by it. It's a very short book but it's still, it's a classic. I was aware that it was going to be slower pacing and I just, I didn't know if it would be too slow for me and if I would fully get into it. Well, <laughs> I've just been on Patreon sprints and have read a lot more than I expected to. I am over halfway. I'm at page 158 and I am really liking this. It's very atmospheric. There have been creepy moments. It hasn't scared me yet. 
I think it needs to give me a little bit more because the creepy moments are very fleeting at the moment. I really like the main character that we're following. I think she's interesting. She definitely has relatable moments to her as well. And she's got a little bit of a comedic timing to her that I'm quite enjoying, just like a subtle comedic timing. So pleasantly surprised by this. Really glad that I'm actually finally getting to it because I think this is one that I could have just kept on my TBR for a while because I found it intimidating, which is so silly because it's so small. I think this is just sometimes how I feel about classics. I feel like the writing style is gonna be harder to get through, but that isn't the case with this. There's just such a good atmosphere. This house is definitely very creepy. There's a lot of descriptions of rain and dark, gloomy mornings, and it's just, I'm here for it. I'm really enjoying it. So I am gonna continue reading a little bit more of this tonight, but I'm gonna go get ready for bed. And hopefully it gets a bit scarier again probably will regret saying that, especially reading it at night in bed. Also, I cannot shut my bedroom door at the moment. The door handle is not like properly attached to the door. And if you try and shut it, it just falls out completely. I've tried to fix it. I need to get someone to like literally come and look at it because the door is like splintering. Anyway, that's a whole problem. But it means that I do have to sleep with my door a little bit ajar at the moment, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I'm especially not the biggest fan of that when I do want to have that kind of fear feeling, which is kind of contradicting why I want to feel scared whilst reading a book, but <laughs> but sat in bed reading a book that potentially might scare me with the door ajar is a recipe for shadows to creep into the, the room and give me the fear. <laughs> See, already regretting my decision. No, I do want it to scare me. I do want it to scare me. I just wish my door would shut. It's fine. It's all good. I'm excited. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Will Beth Be Scared by the book she's reading. On today's episode we are discussing The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I have finished this book. Did it scare me? For one moment it scared me. It definitely built up a creepy atmosphere but it did not maintain a level of fear throughout the book. Creepy and scary for me are two different things. Creepy I think has the potential to turn into something that scares me. Creepy is like moments of like, ooh. Scary is something that consistently has me turning on the lights all around my flat and not wanting to go around any corners that are dark and checking behind me all the time. That is scary. This was more creepy. It had the potential. There was a particular scene where there was this whole scene between these two characters and right at the end there was this one liner that was like, Oh dear. And I really thought it was setting the tone for where this was gonna go. And whilst it was so atmospheric and I really liked it and it was a great haunted house story, it did not scare me. I'm gonna watch the Netflix show. I know it's completely different. I, I'm aware that it is not the same, but I wanna watch the Netflix show and see how different it is and see what they have retained from this book. I gave it four out of five stars. I think that it was a really beautifully written book. The atmosphere was brilliant. I enjoyed it a lot more than I expected to. I think the big reason that this did not scare me is because the main characters themselves were very nonchalant about the whole thing. They voluntarily entered into this situation as part of like a paranormal research experiment type of thing. So they knew partially slightly what they were getting themselves into, but I don't think they knew the full extent of it. There were certainly moments where the characters were scared and that was there. However, it was always balanced with their own kind of reassurances that everything was fine and they basically had no fear that any harm was gonna come to them. They acknowledged that there was something happening, but it wasn't actually gonna do anything more than just scare them and make noises and it couldn't physically harm them. And I think by removing the character's fear, it's also removed my fear when reading the book. If there was more of a threat to these characters, I think that that would have definitely scared me more. But saying all of that, as I said, I really liked this. It was very atmospheric. It's very perfect to read at this time of year. Definitely a good haunted house book for sure. I just wish it would have scared me a bit more. So I was gonna pick up The Haunting Season next, which is a collection of short stories. However, on the front of it, it says it's perfect wintry ghost tales. And I feel like it would be wrong to read it in the autumn. So I'm gonna save that to read in the winter time and hope that those are some really good spooky scary ghost stories to keep me going in the winter season as well so that does mean i am instead going to be moving on to reading eeny miny eeny meeny eeny meeny by mj aldrich this follows a young girl who has emerged from the woods barely alive her story was beyond belief but it was true every dreadful word of it days later another desperate escapee is found and a pattern is emerging pairs of victims are being abducted imprisoned then faced with a terrible choice kill or be killed 
Would you rather lose your life or lose your mind? Detective Inspector Helen Grace has faced down her own demons on her rise to the top, and she leads the investigation to hunt down this unseen monster. She learns that it may be the survivors living calling cards who hold the key to the case. And unless she succeeds, more innocents will die. I think this is going to be kind of thrillery, horrory, and I don't know if this monster is literally a monster, like a creature monster type thing, or if it's a person who is a monster. I'm not really sure which avenue this is taking, but this is the first in a detective thriller series. So it says it's the first in D.I. Helen Grace thriller. So I definitely think this is gonna be more thriller than horror, but it does seem to have potential aspects of horror in there. Also the Daily Mail on the front and says it chills to the bone. So I'm really hoping this actually scares me. What do the reviews say? Oh, there aren't any. Okay, sometimes there's a page of reviews at the front. Well, I don't know. This is the last book on my horror shelf. So once I finish this one, I need to I need to buy some more horror because I'm really enjoying reading this genre. So if you do have any, I, I've been asking this every week, but if you've got any recommendations of something you think will scare me, please do let me know. I have asked on Instagram, so I'm hoping maybe I will get some. Anyway, this is gonna be the book that I'm currently reading, or will be currently reading, I haven't started it yet. Hope to start it later today. And maybe this one will scare me. I've had a little bit of change of plans today. Obviously I don't work Wednesdays with my normal day job. So I'm doing a little bit of freelance work. I also did some scrapbooking this morning. I've been meaning to do my scrapbook for ages. I keep meaning to put the things in from Scotland and from a recent National tr Trust trip to Stourhead. National Trust trip. And I finally did it. I love doing my scrapbook. It's just a nice little creative outlet for me and I enjoy having it to be able to look back over my trips. I suddenly got a lot more creative with my scrapbooking midway through this year. So you can totally see the difference as, as I kind of change it up a little bit. But I like having it as just something that is just for me that I don't feel like I overly need to share. So I spent a bit of time doing that this morning, which was really nice and mindful. Then today, now I'm going to potentially stream maybe for a little bit. And then later this afternoon, I'm gonna take myself on a little date. I was meant to be seeing a friend today, but plans have changed a little bit. So instead, I'm gonna take myself to a nearby town. I'm gonna to go to the cinema, I'm gonna have a little wander around the town, have a wander into the bookshop, maybe grab a bite to eat. I've just thought it'd be nice to do a little self date because you've got to remind yourself that one, it's okay being alone and doing that kind of thing by yourself. And two, just to treat yourself every now and then with something that's just a nice guilt-free activity. I've been wanting to go see Don't Worry Darling for ages and this is what I'm gonna go see tonight. I do have a cinema in my town and weirdly it's not showing in there. Well, not weirdly, I suppose I have waited a long time to go and see it. I should have seen it weeks ago, but it's not showing in the cinema in my town. So I'm gonna to go to a cinema in another town and use that as the excuse to just kind of have a little wander around that town. So it's all gonna be good. It's gonna be a nice day. It is still like pretty much halfway through the day now. It's nearly one. So I do need to actually crack on with streaming if I'm going to, but that's my plan. Those are my book updates. I have listened to more fairy tale and I will listen on my drive to this town. So I am making progress. Things are happening. It is the final week of Spookathon. So I feel like I'm now really trying to push to get those extra few points. But this weekend I'm hoping to read quite a lot as well because I'm going to do a separate little Halloween-y reading vlog as I may have mentioned. So I'm excited for this weekend to be able to read some spooky reads. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> self date yesterday. I went to see Don't Worry Darling and honestly it was so good. I expected it to be not the best. I'd heard mixed reviews, I'd heard really bad reviews about Harry Styles and I just was kind of prepping myself for it to be meh. It was so good. It's five stars for me. I just loved it. I can't really say why I loved it because spoilers but it's so good. Harry Styles was not amazing but he wasn't as bad as I'd expected him to be. I mean I definitely think that Florence Pugh Chris Pine and Gemma Chan carry the film acting wise, but it was so brilliantly put together and the way that it looked into Florence Pugh's character's psyche and how their situation was kind of detangling and how that was affecting the plot and just, ah, oh, 
I can't say anything. I can't say like the main reasons I liked it because it would be spoilers, but it was fantastic and I'm really glad I went to see it. The way that this film showed Florence Pugh's character's psyche and everything that was going on with her and everything that was happening in her life and the place that these characters find themselves in, this, this like village community thing that they live in and what that's all about, it was just... Oh, it was great. I can't say any more without spoiling it, but go see the film or go watch it when it comes out on whatever streaming service it's going to come out on, but it was fantastic. I got a couple of books as well. I'm going to do a proper horror book shopping trip this weekend, but I wanted to pick up these two yesterday. I didn't go in looking for any specific books, but I'm obviously on this kick to try and find books that actually scare me, and one of the ones the booksellers suggested was The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. This is actually being adapted next year into a film by M. Night Shyamalan, so I'm quite excited for that because I watched Old last week and really, really liked that one. That was good. So this follows seven-year-old Wen and her parents, Eric and Andrew, who are vacationing at a remote cabin on a quiet New Hampshire lake with their closest neighbours more than two miles in either direction. We have an isolated setting. As Wen catches grasshoppers in the front yard, a stranger unexpectedly appears in the driveway. Leonard is the largest man Wen has ever seen, but he is young and friendly. Leonard and Wen talk and play until Leonard abruptly apologises and tells Wen, none of what's going to happen is your fault. Three more strangers arrive at the cabin carrying unidentifiable menacing objects. As Wen sprints inside to warn her parents, Leonard calls out, your dads won't let us in Wen, but they have to. We need your help to save the world. So begins an unbearably tense, gripping tale of paranoia, sacrifice, apocalypse, and survival that escalates to a shattering conclusion, one in which the fate of a loving family and quite possibly all of humanity are intertwined. Now the reviews on the back of this one say it's terrific, disturbing, a desperate novel, loads emotion and tension into every paragraph on every page. Now it hasn't necessarily said it's scary, it does say it's gory, and the bookseller said it wasn't like slashery, but the influence on the front kind of tell me otherwise. The bookseller said this did scare them and that they are intrigued to see the film adaptation having read the book. So I want to read it. I want to see what it's like, see if it scares me, and then watch the film adaptation next year. Then I also picked up The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. This is an example of how much my reading taste changed because I saw this when it was out in hardback because the cover I kept being drawn to. I really, really like the divide of the cover. And every time I picked it up and looked at the blurb, I clearly did not buy it or put it on my wish list. However, now I've picked it up. A family return to their hometown and to the dark past that still haunts them. Long ago, Nathan lived in a house in the country with his abusive father, and he has never told his family what happened there. Long ago, Maddie saw something she shouldn't have, and she's trying to remember that lost trauma by making haunting sculptures. Long ago, something sinister, something hungry, walked in the tunnels, mountains, and coal mines of their hometown in rural Pennsylvania. Now Nathan and Maddie are married, and they have moved back to their hometown, and now what happened long ago is happening again, and it's happening to their son. The review on the bottom of this one says, The dread, the scope, the pacing, the turns. I haven't felt this so intensely since The Shining. Now The Shining is a book that a lot of people have recommended to me. I have watched the film for The Shining, so I might try and pick up that book of the weekend, maybe, but I thought I would give this one a go. The reviews on the front say it's universally horrifying, a rich, rewarding tale, move over King, the new voice of modern horror. So these are the two books that I picked up. Hopefully one of them scares me. We shall see. I did start reading Eeny Meeny. I read a very short amount of it in the cafe that I just grabbed some food in before going to the cinema. So I've read 40 pages and it's addictive. It's short chapters and there is a lot of questions being asked that make me want to keep reading it and find out what they are. The writing style is pretty simple and easy to get through. So I'd imagine that this will be quite a fast paced read. It's definitely not giving me horror vibes, it's much more thriller, which I think I did suspect that it would be thrillery crime-esque thing. And at the moment, having now started it, I think, because my question was, is this monster a literal like creature monster or is it a person that is a monster? And I think it's more a person that is a monster. And I think that was my kind of question as to whether it was seeping into like paranormal fantasy type of horror or whether it's more a person who is committing these crimes. So obviously thinking it's more of a person could be wrong. I won't necessarily say if I'm wrong because I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but yeah, it's it's good so far. It's fine. It's not blowing my mind or anything, but I'm only 40 pages in, so we'll see how this progresses. Okay, it's currently Friday. This is the last day of this vlog and I said I wanted to finish Fairy Tale by the end of the week and I have this much left. So the goal for today is to try and finish this. This is three hours in the audiobook. It is currently about midday. This is my goal. You'd think that should be doable. I have a full day of work. I'm very busy. I'm also streaming after work. I don't know if I'm going to be able to listen whilst I'm working because of the kind of jobs that I am doing today, but this is the plan. Can I do it? Let's find out. Okay, it's Friday evening. I'm wrapping up this vlog and I did not quite manage to finish 
Fairy Tale by Stephen King. I have about 100 pages left, just over an hour in the audiobook, so I'm going to finish this tomorrow. I am really liking this. It's definitely slowed down in the middle. Slowed down. It was already pretty slow, to be honest. Like, it's not a fast-paced read. It's been slower in the middle, which is why it's taken me longer to get through. However, I am liking it a lot. I really like the way that our main character has referenced all of this modern fiction alongside the older fairy tales that he's talking about when he's seeing what's happening in this fantasy world. And I really like how that has a modern take on it as well as being merged with these older fairy tales. So it's kind of blurring some lines together, which I really like. So I am definitely liking this and I think it will come out as a round of four out of five stars, but obviously haven't quite been able to finish it today. I haven't read too much more of Eeny Meeny since I last spoke to you, so I feel like I don't really have any more thoughts properly on this. I would like to finish this preferably before Halloween because I would like to read some of the books that I buy tomorrow over the Halloween weekend as well. I'm going to be doing a Halloween book shopping trip tomorrow and I'm so excited. That will be a whole video on itself. I'm going to do like a weekend video including horror book shopping and generally a couple of Halloween -y activities over the weekend so that'll be really good fun. But yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. It's been a good reading week. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. If you have enjoyed, please do give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what you have been reading this week and subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. As I said, there will be a weekend vlog going live Saturday. If you're watching this on Tuesday, this goes live on Tuesday and that vlog will be live within the week, basically. You can also find my Patreon link down below where I do lots of extra content and also my online shop. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.